Hi, and welcome to Counterbalancing, presented by Tori Bass and Lynn Hoff. When defining counterbalancing, it is helpful to describe first the problem that counterbalancing seeks to address. That is, multiple experiments given to subjects in consecutive repeat trials may yield different results during subsequent experiments. Participants may suffer from either practice effects, that is, fatigue or familiarity, or boredom effects, that is, boredom, which cause them to respond differently during each trial. Counterbalancing is a solution in that it allows experimenters to control these order effects. Items are presented to half of the participants in one order and in a different order to the other half of participants. As Harris notes, when we counterbalance, we ensure that each condition in our experiment follows and is preceded by every other condition an equal number of times. Thus, for each participant who does one particular sequence of conditions, there are other participants who perform the conditions in all the other possible combinations of orders. So here's a hypothetical study. Say you wanted to find out if people recall a list of items better when it's presented as text or when it's presented as graphics. So you have group one, which will be asked to recall a list of items presented as graphics, and then another list of items presented as text. Group two would be asked to recall a list of items presented as text, and then another list of items presented as graphics. As Harris notes, this way, although we have not eliminated order effects, our participants are still likely to get worse as time goes by. We will have rendered these effects unsystematic. That is, fatigue and boredom should affect one condition as much as they affect a second condition. While complete counterbalancing requires a large participant base, partial counterbalancing with smaller populations can be achieved through Latin square counterbalancing. Latin square counterbalancing seeks to eliminate order effects by creating grids of randomly selected portions of the population sample and assigning each grid the experiment in a certain order. This eliminates any systemic bias that may have resulted otherwise. Thank you for listening to our presentation on counterbalancing.